Hello from Bryson City. We're here to do another art lesson today. We're going to do pinch pots today, of which I have one of my... my favorites. So if you don't have clay, um, if you don't have a big glob of red clay or white clay, um, you can use Play-Doh or you can use... Uh, sculpty you can make little cups with sculpty um, just depends depends on what um, what you'd like to make so um, but yeah play-doh clay you can also get air dry clay um, if you want to uh, use your cup or pot today for um, either to eat out of drink out of or to put a flower in um, I would recommend um, getting some or um, if you could take it somewhere to be fired that would be the best situation if you're just going to use it for decoration um, hold objects that kind of stuff you can use air dry clay that would be all right it just um, there's a lot of different options and stuff um, more than anything clay is good for the physicality of it um, take a ball of clay while you're kneading and working on it um, you're actually using all of your arms and your hands. So let me get my other ball over here. Um, so it's good to, uh, to strengthen your hands. Um, if you're kneading clay, use your entire shoulders back and your, basically your whole body. So clay is good for the, um, the physical part of it. It's good to help you. Um, I have a few folks who. Come play in the clay, or um, you have physical things that'll get worse. So the it keeps them moving and uh, being physical. But anyway, so what we're going to do today is a basic pinch pot. Um, I'll show you the technique for that. Um, I've got a couple balls of clay here, clay here. So some things to know if you're going to mess with clay is make sure your fingernails are trimmed. Make sure you take off any jewelry any rings you may have um, clay loves to get in the cracks of your rings and your jewelry it also loves as I've been working on it loves to get in your fingernails if you have fingernails and it will dry your hands out so uh, make sure you wash your hands real good also later on if you do anything else to your pieces if you're actually using clay try not to rinse them off all right so here's that pinch pot i was talking about earlier this is one of my favorites this is made out of uh, high fire stoneware and we've put it in the um, salt kiln to be fired so it has a real nice sheen and appearance to it, it has some ash on it that's run so, and I painted a design on the inside there. And then this is one from the wood kiln that I carved out like a Japanese tea bowl. So all of these, after uh, we made, made them into the pot, I took tools and carved out the foot and carved this design in it. So today we won't be doing that. We'll just be doing basic. There's two clay balls. Let me get the camera adjusted here. I hear my wind chimes over here. It's been quite nice the last couple of days. I don't know. I think tomorrow the weather's not supposed to be as good. I think there's supposed to be rain and thunderstorms. So you can feel it cooling off a little bit. All right, so what I'm doing is just packing, patting, packing the clay down, making a good ball for him. We'll do that with both of these. Okay. So 
So once you're in the shape, then the middle, wherever you want the middle to be. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to squeeze this out a little bit more and make it more shaped like this. And then I'll put my thumb up here. This clay is really wet, so I don't need to have any extra water on hand right now. If I was using clay that was more firm, um, then I would use water to soften it up and, and uh, um, start smoothing it out, smooth out some of these cracks. But this stuff's pretty wet, so if you can do like that, it's pretty wet clay. All right, so I've taken my thumb, put a hole in the middle, and now we're just going to go around the outside here. And as we go, we're going to pinch. So you get fingerprints, and you want to pull the clay up as you go. All right, so I've gone around and go up one more time. So again, it's take your time, pull up slowly and squeeze. And you want to make sure that you keep the consistency of the thickness of the sides the same. So you don't want to go too crazy and um, get it squeezed, you know, squeeze it so much that it starts to um, flare out because clay is natural shape. This will flare out and become very thin. So you want to feel on the inside here and make sure you're keeping it about this even consistency. <clears throat> Once you get this form like this, you can take your thumb on the inside and smooth. So I like to hold it like this in my hand. And then use my thumb and push. Put it on my hand. This is one of those pottery things. I think everybody who does pottery, um, if they don't, they should know how to make a pinch pot. Yeah, not everybody who does pottery has to know how to use a wheel, because you can do hand building, create slabs and stuff like that. So here we are. So far. And I do use both hands. You want to make sure while you're doing this that, you know, just like anything, you want to work out both hands. Um, I am left-handed, if you haven't noticed from the videos. But I like to use my time playing with clay to work on giving my right hand a chance to participate. So we get to the inside somewhat smooth and then on the outside still got this little bit of a texture. Let's go ahead and sit it, sit it down. Kind of push it a little bit, flatten it out some. So I've made a nice flat bottom. Later on we can carve that. Now what I want to do is I want to support the outside with my right hand. Push in with my right hand while I'm pushing with my thumb and pulling up. And if you're doing this with Play-Doh, uh, I will tell you that you don't want to put too much water on that Play-Doh, just like with clay. Play-Doh just gets kind of messy with water. But clay, if you add Too much water to mud. So. There we go. And for now, uh, this is in a, what I'm going to call finished for now. Um, later on, I'll come back with carving tools and carve a design. I'll trim out the bottom of the foot. So it'll be similar to this. They have a nice foot on the bottom. And there you go. Um, probably could go, let me see if I can go a little bit taller. In um, Japanese culture, they call this a unomi. 
It's an everyday use teacup. Um, and they can be wheel thrown, they can be hand built, they can be made out of a slab. Um, there's a whole group of people that collect the ones that are hand built and look really funky. fire gives them special properties like them one of my favorite ones is you get it in the wood fire and it have a lot of ash and stuff build up on it and it looks kind of crusty like like some kind of crystals or something it's really cool all right so that now this one instead of going tall like this one we're going to go more out like a bowl. So we're going to go a little bit wider like this style. All right. So I'm not going to, like you noticed last time, I rolled the other one this way and made it taller. This, I'm not going to do that so much. I'm going to keep rolling it in my hands like this and kind of get it pancaked out so it looks like, like this kind of. So a little different shape as we start off. Now I'll pull up as we come around the edges here. If you ever go up to the Akonalefti Indian Village, they usually have folks there um, who will be making pots. Uh-oh, I hear Iris. <laughs> but they'll have folks at the Econoleft Indian Village making pots and showing you the traditional uh, Cherokee style, which is not too um, far removed from what I'm doing. Um, I'm, what I'm doing is kind of derived from that. All pinch pots kind of start the same way. The difference that what they do is they use a totally different clay and um, their, their pot. Instead of carving it, instead of carving a design in it, they'll take a f smooth stone and then smooth out the outside. And then they are, they are pit fired. Now, if you get some clay and you want to try pit firing, that would be cool. Just remember that whenever you fire clay in order for it to vitrify, you have to, vitrify meaning being solid, you have to get to 1,800 degrees, more or less, is where some of these clay bodies will start to harden. Uh, when the Cherokee do their pit fire, or any indigenous tribe do their pit fire, typically they are stoking and using hardwoods and their fire, their pit fire will last And, uh, they are absolutely you know, even similar temperatures, 1800 degrees all the way up to 2300 degrees, and vitrifying their pots. So, so now as you can see, as I've been sitting here talking, I've been slowly pulling this out, and it's starting to come along nicely. Now what I need to do is use my right hand and flare it out, because we want this one to be a a bowl, not a cup. There we go. Now it's still pretty thick down here on the bottom, so I'm going to do that trick before I showed you, where I'm going to put my thumb in, hold it in my hand, and push. So. All right. And supporting the outside, thumb on the inside, smooth, smooth, smooth. Of course, if you're right-handed, it'd look like this: hand on the outside, thumb this way. Now. 
Now, if I leave these uncovered outside here, for a while, I'll be able to trim up and play outside with my quicker than it would inside your house, unless, of course, your house is really dry. I know at the school, our pottery studio is um, pretty dry. And so, whenever you, um, whenever you leave some clay out uncovered without putting plastic or something over it, um, it will dry. It'll be dry by the end of the day, or or in the shape where you can't work on it anymore. So, way to prevent that is by um, covering it. You cover it with either uh, best thing is the very lightweight plastic like. Um, uh, the bags you get at the grocery store or bags from a uh, dry cleaner. Um, or you can also cover it with newspaper, which will allow it to dr dry slowly. If you're using Play-Doh, of course, you don't want that to dry out because then you can't play with it anymore. But if you want it to dry out, it will. All clay, Play-Doh, everything as it dries out shrinks. So it will be smaller It's finished, and when you started, this was a little bit. So it's ten percent. So all potters, at least ten percent, all potters have to know when they start making something that it's going to be ten to fifteen percent smaller than when they started. They have to account for that. So they have to do a little bit of math. Just smoothing out the cracks on the edge here. Some folks that you can look at um, that do really nice pottery. If you're if you're very local, you can find Lucy. Dean Reed. Been doing pottery for many years, and she uh, makes really cool stuff. Uh, there's also a lady from out in Oklahoma, Lisa Rutherford. You can check her out. Um, also, a big fan of our local potters, um, Elise Delfield and Joe Frank McKee. You can check them out. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm looking at this and it's like, hmm, it, it needs a shape. So let's do this. I'm going to push this way and then push this way. And we'll give it a little shape here. Let me even it up. There we go. A little triangle, if you will. All right. So I'm going to leave this drop off carefully. In the tomorrow, I'll show you. Um, it be a while before you glaze again, but that's okay. Um, right now, we just, uh, you know, we kind of roll with it, and uh, we'll uh, we'll see what happens. Hope you've if um if you have any questions, uh, questions about where to get clay, anything like that. Um, Put that in the comment. Be happy to answer those for you. Um, if you have any questions about uh, any other potters or anybody else that we should uh, that you'd like to check out, 